Building an ad agency from scratch, now this is thoughtful. Hello, I'm Kitty Bu in Shanghai. Every Western agency entering China faces enormous challenges, like learning to work with local companies, finding good staff, and keeping up with the rapid pace of change in China. This week on Thoughtful China, we'll find out what it takes to run an agency by talking with Ardo Hanpatsumian, CEO of BBH China. Ardo, let's start today's conversation with creativity. BBH prides itself globally on its creative reputation, but it seems hard to deliver here in China. So in your perspective, why aren't agencies in China producing stronger creative work overall? Ooh, that's a, that's a really loaded question. I think the show is only 15 minutes, so it, we can go on for a couple of hours if you want to talk about that. Um, I guess, you know, not to comment on other agencies' work and, uh, and how they achieve things, uh, there's a lot of creativity in China. I mean, I guess one of the questions is, uh, by whose standards are we measuring creativity? Are we measuring by Asian standards? Are we measuring it uh, from a global standard, from a Western point of view, or from a, from a Chinese perspective, or from an Asian perspective? So I think that you know, there is lots of creativity. Um, and agencies, I'm sure, are, are, are in the same position that we are in trying to push the envelope. You know? Sometimes it's five degrees at a time. You can move a client and a piece of uh, work prove it uh, and then be able to move it 10 degrees the second time around. But if there is creativity, why don't we see creative work? Well, I guess uh, you know, you're leading up to that question, aren't you? Okay, so <laughs> I think, um, look, there's probably a number of factors and you know, each agency faces its own challenges and its own issues. I think uh, the world economic situation is making clients perhaps in China a little bit more uh, risk averse. Uh, perhaps not trying to, to push the envelope. Uh, I think uh, research has become, uh, it's become a stick rather than a tool um, in terms of measurements. So uh, I believe also kind of trying to get China into one framework uh, when you're testing work from third tier cities to first tier cities or fourth tier cities. There's differences in culture, differences of opinion, difference of humor. Uh, trying to get one size fits all across the marketplace, I think, is, is a difficult challenge and not taking advantage of the matrix that is China media to be able to tactically have the same message tonally different within different marketplaces. So are we trying too hard to try to have it work for a third tier city? Now, having said all that, you know, at BBH, we always believe the primacy of the idea and the power of creativity. Um, a big idea will travel, whether we feel that that's creative or not. When you have 78 million views on some of the things that are on YouTube, does that mean it's not creative? Or does that mean that, that it, it's popular, but it's not seen to be the breakthrough that, that agencies perhaps and, and juries are looking for? Just now you mentioned uh, research has become a stick, not a tool. Could right. you elaborate on that? Well, I think, you know, I mean, all the research agencies we work with, the, the role is to, to test the work to see what is the, I guess, the salience of, of, of the idea? Uh, and they come back with feedback. The feedback is usually, what can you change to improve the work? I think, unfortunately, most of the time, I, I, you know, time pressures don't allow to make the tweaks and go back and test again. So it becomes, okay, now change this, change that. Consumers didn't understand this bit. That's, as opposed to working with the, me, uh, with the research agencies to get a better, deeper understanding of what, where are the buttons we need to press? What did we miss in the first place? So, so it's becoming a yes or a no, uh, as opposed to, okay, let's take a look at this and how can we push the envelope a little bit further. Mm -hmm. you, now you mentioned you in your answer, um, by whose standard are we judging creativity? There's the Asian standard, Western standard, global standard, China standard. So I guess, what, what, where is the difference of this standard? That's a good question. I mean, you know, are, are, the, are, are juries, uh, looking at it from a perspective based on work coming out of London or, or, or Europe or North America. Um, you know, is, is the work going to be standing up to work that comes out of London? Uh, is that the measuring point where maybe audiences are a little bit more mature in terms of understanding advertising? They've had a, a lot longer in terms of understanding nuances of advertising, understanding different kinds of humor, sarcasm perhaps, or hyperbole. Um, you know, so if, if you're measuring a, a, a spot that, that comes out of London in that maturity versus a nascent market that's kind of still growing in understanding, uh, I think how do, how, do you, how do you, which one is right, which one is wrong? If it doesn't break through in, in Cannes or at the one show, does that mean it's not good enough? 
Uh, so what is the stick? I mean, if in China, again, an example of, of ads hitting 120 million, 200 million hits, 150 million downloads, is that not a successful piece of communication? Is it, you know, if, if you know, it, it, that measure is never kind of taken into account, perhaps in effectiveness, uh, it's taken into account, but it doesn't mean it's not a creative spot. And when you get down to creativity, there's usually never on the brief, make it creative or don't make it creative. I think we all try to really get to that point to make it as creative as possible. And then within the boundaries or within the confines that we've got. But I think if you get the big idea and you establish a universal human truth, that big idea will travel. And then how do you make that, how do you make that idea uh, more creative, if you will, from the terms that we're using right now? And how do you get that to the standard for others to recognize that it's creative? Are you saying that China has lower creativity standard? No, I don't think so. I think that, you know, judging from what we've been able to push in the envelope for the last uh, almost seven years that we've been in China, there, there, is, there is the ability, you know, consumers, I mean, I guess David Ogilvy said this a long time, consumers aren't idiots. I mean, you've got to give them a little bit of benefit of doubt. Sometimes clients are more nervous than the consumers actually are, and actually they hold back, uh, you know. And again, because there's boxes you need to tick uh, to be able to uh, prove a piece of work or not. So where do you think China ranks as a, uh, as a global creative market right now then? I think, I mean, you know, you look at the work uh, on air, uh, you know, it's it produced extremely well. Uh, there's great ideas in the work that you're seeing from every agency, from even from local Chinese agencies. And it's not to say that the international agencies have, a, have a, the right to, the only ones to wave the flag. I think, you know, uh, it, it's not the standards, it's trying to move the envelope so that we keep up with the consumers and get to a point where creativity in China is judged as creativity from China, uh, as opposed to does it, does it you know, stack up against you know, what are the criteria from, from the Western part of the world? Help me to understand what you mean by pushing the envelope a little better. I guess what, what it is is, you know, I mean, you know, consumers, you know, it's, you know, we've gone through many generations with consumers and trying to, you know, you know, it's my own ridiculous theory, if you will, 70s and 80s, we used to paint a picture in the West of what your perfect life should be like. Here's a white picket fence, the car, one and a half kids, a dog, uh, and, then, and then you move forward into, I guess, the 80s and 90s where, you know, brands all of a sudden want to have a dialogue with consumers. We want to have a conversation with the consumers. Uh, and, and I think now brands that, that are established and are brave will be able to let the consumers have a dialogue amongst themselves that the brand provides a platform for. So pushing the envelope would be being confident enough in your brand to be able to let the consumers be able to, to have a topic or a debate around it. And then pushing the envelope in another sense in terms of their creativity is like, you know, how do we get over the doing a spot without a celebrity? Uh, how do we kind of why, why the, you know, it's a shortcut to, to mass understanding. However, is that a shortcut that is uh, avoiding getting the big idea? Uh, that the idea is bigger than the celebrity would be. Another thing we would like to talk about is actually um, how, to, how to work with uh, Chinese joint venture partners, mm -hmm. which almost everybody else had to do, but right. um, you guys didn't have to do it because you're one of the two, if yeah. not the first one, That's international correct. major marketing agency, uh, advertising agency correct. who got an independent operating license. That's correct. Um, so I was wondering, how has that made your job different right. from other agency CEOs? Well, mm, okay, it's interesting again. Uh, you know, I guess yeah, we're one of the first two that, after the WTO rules changed, we were able to apply as an independent agency. Uh, it wasn't something BBH had planned in advance, it just worked out that the timing was uh, similar. So we were the first or one of the first two uh, uh, that, that had our independent license to start off in China. I think, uh, and people say, oh, did it hinder growth or it didn't hinder growth? I, I think, I don't think of it, it, it didn't hinder or not hinder us. I, you know, we. We came into the marketplace knowing we're the new kids on the block. Uh, we, we spent some time uh, working with Jigsaw, uh, created a report called China Whispers because you know, you're gonna walk into client meetings, you're gonna, you've been here for five minutes, what do you know about China? I've been in Asia for 21 years, but it doesn't really reflect in a meeting. So I, I think the, the, the point was to, to do some real thinking uh, on this China Whispers deck, to have a point of view when we were walking into meetings. And it did help us to be able to be much more selective in, in the type of clients we wanted to work for. Uh, I'm not quite sure how the JV relationships uh, worked or, or didn't work, the advantages or disadvantages of being able to open doors, but you gotta ask yourself your question. If it was going so well, why did they all break up their JV partnerships? But does that mean it's more stress on you? Uh, 
without stress a Chinese is, partner? I can't live without stress. I mean, <laughs> I don't know because I, I wouldn't be able to know how it was with a JV partner to be able to say how it wasn't. I mean, even as a BBH a global agency with our global relationships, nothing, we got, there was no free lunch. Um, we only had one client, global client, when we started on the ground here. But if you had a Chinese partner, then you probably, would have had a maybe. more credibility, probably, no? Mm, I don't know about credibility. I think it would have been probably opened the doors, um, maybe more a clients, bit more maybe. clients, maybe, but would have been the right kind of clients for BBH at the time. I wish I had a time clock, we can go back and see how it would have been if we had done it that way. Perhaps, you know, I would not be sitting here, I would have been retired at this point and not as stressed as I usually am. But, um, no, but I, I honestly think, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm, I think us, myself and my partners uh, at BBH, are really proud of what we were able to accomplish in the time that we were doing it here. Maybe it would have been easier, maybe it would have been difficult, maybe it would have been clients that are not right fit for BBH. I, I wouldn't know that, but, I think whatever we've done, you know, we've done off our own back uh, in the last uh, almost seven years now. The next topic seems to be everybody else's headache. Mm. It's about keeping and uh, hiring the right team. Yeah. Um, how do you manage your China team? Uh, okay, uh, you know, this is one, one, one kind of chest beating moment, I guess, for us. Uh, in the seven years, we've only had a total of uh, 20 people leave the agency. So we've kind of bucked the trend uh, in terms of turnover. Uh, and from the 20 or so that left, only I think four, four or five went to another agency. The others have left the industry or left the country and pursued other dreams. So we've been proud to be able to retain. How did you do that? I don't know. Maybe it's what we put in the, in the water every morning. <laughs> maybe it's holding their families hostage so they can't leave the agency. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess you have to see the place to kind of believe it. Uh, I think uh, we've come into this, you know, uh, myself and the partners and everybody we hire, uh, they know that everybody works equally hard. Nobody works harder than the other person. Everybody pitches in. It's, it's been one entity and team. I mean, we've been accused at times of being a cult, which I kind of take a little bit as a pride factor, but, but that, that cult of the black sheep, if you will, uh, has been successful for us. And Why do you think people call you a cult? I think because we, 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 kinda <laughs> we are one organism that thinks and moves the same way. Uh, we, 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 we haven't, we haven't, uh, we haven't, uh, I guess, what was the question? Uh, How did you manage to keep so many people? Well, the turnover is so low. Yeah, I, I think we just we create an environment where it's, it's, it's very supportive, uh, there, very little hierarchy. Uh, you know, we, we've always known, being the new kids in town, we've always had to stay together to do this. And I think we've never stopped having the uh, startup mentality. I mean, my boss sometimes gets upset and saying, you're not a startup anymore. And, you know, I go, yeah, we're not. But the mentality of being a startup and everybody pitching in and everything that we do has been very successful for us. And the environment, I mean, you could get paid more somewhere else. And I think most of the kids, if they leave, they'd probably get paid a lot more <laughs> have to, uh, having left BBH, but they don't. Uh, because some of the things are intangible. Aren't you worried about um, helping to educate these people, bring up their levels, and then they will leave for somebody else? You're, you're, Kitty, that's, that's, that's exactly what you worry about a lot. Uh, but you've got to do the best that you can. And so far, we've been lucky that only four or five of them have gone to another agency. Uh, uh, and you know, they, those are the ones that usually break your heart the most, because if you've trained them up for a while and then you know, you pass it on to another agency, it becomes uh, every person we, we, that leaves is, is hard. But I think, you know, in, in China, advertising isn't, isn't a very um, a s inspiring uh, career for people. They usually use advertising to get to become clients. And this is your stepping stone, gets, get to learn a little bit, and then becoming clients is much more uh, a shiny star that, that, that kids want to be part of. Uh, in the West, it seems like advertising still has a little bit of sex appeal. Coming back again, thanks to Mad Men. Uh, but, you know, we don't live like that anymore, unfortunately. Good. We, uh, we actually have um, a couple of questions from viewers on our LinkedIn group on this topic. Okay. Uh, Joshua Rogan and uh, Michelle Rose both want to ask you about the solutions for solving war for talent, as well as advice for training Chinese staff to become leaders mm. and develop their subordinates. That's a very good question, because I think the thing, the, the, the obvious is that we have to grow the local to become part, the, to, to run this agency. I'm not going to be here forever, uh, you know, I'm, I, and my partners aren't either. I, we're trying to build the next generation of BBH. I think the industry ourselves have, not, have done ourselves a huge disservice, and I, I believe if you talk to any of the CEOs or MDs from the other agencies, I mean, you, you get resumes from, from kids that have been 
and working for six years, and they're already business directors. At BBH, you don't become a business director in six years, and you kind of look at this. So, you know, there's been a premium put on uh, the ability to speak English, uh, uh, and the poaching and paying $5 more for somebody to cross the street has become a self-fulfilling pain right now, uh, where, I, you know, the talent pool is out there, but the cost of entry to be able to bring them in are, you know, it's almost the same price of having somebody come in from Hong Kong or Taiwan or even from Singapore that it would be to hire in China. But we're committed to hiring China, so we, we kind of try to grow and educate the staff within it so they become true BBHers. Well, Michelle and Joshua actually had a very good point. They ask if, um, they were wondering, it, it seems that uh, some people are afraid of developing people in the fear of losing their own expat jobs. Yeah. Do you see that happening? Okay, when you're talking about uh, account managers, account directors, and group account directors, well, I mean, my, my training growing through advertising, uh, and I started advertising in Asia, so my first job was in Hong Kong, uh, was always taught that in order to be promoted, you have to be able to get the next person behind you to be able to take your job, to be able to take that position. So unless you're growing your people, nurturing them to get to that position, then you should not be allowed to, to progress into that. If, if that's not happening, if that's a fear within China, then I think it's, it's the responsibility of the agency management to make sure that the, their staff understand that this is, this is part of your growth in order to grow somebody else or else you're not going to go anywhere. So, you know, you want the next job, then you bring the next person up and then you can take the next job. Ardo, thanks for being on Thoughtful China. Thank you very much, Kitty. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. That wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe to us on Tudo and YouTube. You can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter and join our LinkedIn group. Also, don't forget to sign up for Market to Watch, Building Brands Beyond Tier 1 in China, a conference organized by Thoughtful China and Advertising Age in Shanghai on September 5th. Some of the country's top marketing experts will share insights about how to grow your business in China's markets beyond the first tier. For the first time, EdAge will bring its Women to Watch Awards to China with an awards dinner on the same day. We hope you'll join us in honoring some of the marketing industry's most promising female professionals. Further details are available now on edh.com and thoughtfulchina.com. We hope to see you there.